Have you driven a Ford lately? Ford and your local Ford dealer will invite you to see the 1983 Ford Cars and Trucks present the USFL, the big play. Let's go to the Pontiac Silverdome. Last Monday night, Birmingham at Michigan. Second quarter, the Panthers trailing at home 10-0. Little quarterback Bobby Abair makes a big throw and a big play here by Anthony Carter. Number one, off the hands of the defender. Carter hacks on to narrow the gap to 10-7. Birmingham still in front. The cheerleaders love it in Pontiac. Later in the second quarter, Anthony Carter back receiver Birmingham. Punt goes from hero to goat. He fumbles it. Lonnie Johnson recovers for the Stallions. And the Stallions take advantage of this turnover as they did all three turnovers in the first half. Monday. Bob Lane to Greg Anderson, touchdown. Birmingham increases the lead to 17 to 7. But the Panthers come back in the third quarter. This one yard TD plunge by John Williams ties it up at 20 all. Now we move to the final minute of play in regulation. Birmingham on the drive, which they hope will be the game winner. Bob Lane looking long for Ron Frederick. And the ball is intercepted by Fred Logan. He rolls into the end zone, tries to spike the ball. Hey, Fred, the ball is still alive. But Daryl Mason of Birmingham makes a heads-up play, covers it. The official signals, touchdown, Birmingham. But they got together later, about three or four minutes later, changed the play. Michigan got possession. Neither team could score in the last minute of regulation. Raleigh Dodge says, hey, we should have won the game. Didn't work out that way. But in the overtime, Scott Norwood put an end to all the speculation. 46-yard field goal, winner. Birmingham beats Michigan 23 to 20 in overtime. Then last Sunday afternoon, Mile High Stadium in Denver, the gold taking on the LA Express in a Pacific Division battle. The fans are mad about the firing of Red Miller. No doubt about that. And I guess the Denver defense was mad also. They come out smoking. The guys in black and gold come up with an early interception of a Mike Ray pass. That's David Dumars. He intercepts, and it looks here like he goes all the way for the touchdown, but he stepped on the sideline and about the 30-yard line out of bounds, so it wasn't a touchdown, but it was still a big play for Denver because that set up their first TD of the ballgame. Quarterback Alvin White back to pass, hits running back Harry Sidney across the middle, 32 yards for the score. The goal take a 7-0 lead in the first half. Meanwhile, the Express, well, they were playing more like a local. Big tight end Ricky Ellis, one of the leading receivers in the league. He's wide open on a fourth down play. Nobody around him looks like a touchdown. He drops the ball. Then later on in this first half, Vince Abbott badly shanks a field goal attempt, and the Express just can't put any points on the board in the first half. But the second half, L.A. played very well. Good catch coming up by recently signed Anthony Allen. Mike Ray has all day to pass, finds Allen inside the 25. Allen gets nailed but hangs onto the ball. That set up a TD pass. Mike Ray to John Barnett, 19 yards, and we're tied up in Denver at seven apiece. The goal went ahead 10 to 7 on a field goal, but a big play coming up here for L.A. Third down, blitz is on. Mike Ray beats the blitz as he finds Wilbert Hazlitt. Hazlitt gets it all the way down to the six-yard line of Denver. And then running back John Barnett goes over for the winning touchdown. L.A. wins a real gut-wrencher in Denver. Final, the Express 14 and the goal 10. And the Boston Breakers and the Washington Federals last Sunday afternoon, RFK Stadium, nation's capital, first quarter. Johnny Walton of the Boston Breakers had a good day. Not very many people showed up to watch the game, though, just over 7,000. Here in the first quarter of play, Walton hooks up with a speedy Frank Lockett. It's a rainy, muddy day, but Lockett hangs on, 7-0 Boston. In the second quarter, though, Washington quarterback Mike Hohenzey, who's really putting some points on the board the last couple of weeks, finds former Boston Breaker running back Billy Taylor. Some great moves by Taylor. He goes 46 yards for the touchdown, and the Federals at home have tied Boston by a count of 7-7. Seven, seven. With four minutes uh, to go in the first half, Hohenzey finds Mike Holmes over the middle. Holmes makes the catch and watch the maneuvering across the middle of this muddy field. 34 yards for the touchdown. And at halftime, Washington led Boston 14-7 to the fourth quarter. It's 14-13. Washington hanging on by the skin of their teeth. Hohenzey back to pass. Picked off by linebacker Mike Brewington, who returns the ball back to the Washington Federal 34-yard line at, with seven minutes left in the game. And then quarterback Johnny Walton. Little play fake, fakes to his right, pump fake there, and finds Charlie Smith wide open, touchdown, 39 yards, two-point conversion, good. The Boston Breakers stay alive in the chase for the wildcard playoff spot. They beat Washington 21-14. Last Sunday evening, Sun Devil Stadium, Tempe, Arizona, Philadelphia Stars looking for their eighth win in a row against the Arizona Wranglers. 52-yard pass play early for Philly, the team in red. Quarterback Chuck Fusina hooks up with Willie Collier. The youngster at the University of Pittsburgh makes a good run across the middle of the beautiful turf there in Arizona. That set up a Kelvin Bryant touchdown. One of two on the night for number 44. Bryant, of course, the league's second leading runner. 12 weeks into the season, early second quarter. Arizona back to pass. Alan Risher looking over the middle of the field. It's tipped and intercepted by Scott Werner. 
Winner, of course, the former All-American from the University of Georgia. That set up another Philadelphia touchdown as quarterback Fusina, number 14, would fade back to pass and look for Tom Donovan, his old teammate at Penn State. Donovan makes the catch in the end zone, 20 yards in a TD, 14-0 start. With a score 14-7, third quarter, Philly again on the drive. It's again Fusina to Willie Collier for 10 yards. And then Kelvin Bryant, who ran for 106 yards in this game, Picks up another 15 yards, picking his way downfield. He's a slashing type of runner. You really don't get a good hit on Kelvin Bryant. That set up Bryant's second touchdown of the night. One yard dive, and Philly wins its eighth in a row, 24-7 against Arizona. The Oakland Invaders invaded Tampa Stadium last weekend to battle the Tampa Bay Bandits. First drive of the game, 80-yard drive. Mike Kelly, the quarterback for Tampa, to Eric Trevelyan, 21 yards. Trevelyan, a nice run, nice maneuvering, touchdown. Bandits lead it 7-0. Later on in the first half of play, Kelly over the middle to Danny Bugs. This is second quarter action now. 18 yards for Bugs, the former National Football League veteran. That puts the Bandits in good position in Oakland territory. Now, watch this perfect pass play over the middle. Again, Kelly, the youngster from Georgia Tech, to Willie Gillespie, 16 yards, touchdown. Bandits led it 17 to three at halftime. Second half, former NFL All-Pro tight end Raymond Chester goes out for a pass here for Oakland. Fred Busana. Looks around, got plenty of time, finds Chester. Chester is nailed about the helmet. He had to be taken off the field on a stretcher. And fortunately, it was nothing more than a strained neck. So it looks like Raymond Chester will be playing some more football this season. Let's hope so. Bandit defense was also tough on this night. Fred Bassana sacked here by nose tackle Ron Simmons, big number 50 of Tampa Bay. And a great effort here by little Greg Boone. Who says little guys can't play football? The game is already salted away, but Boone, does he quit? No, he smells that goal line. You think he's down? Guess again, Greg Boone, touchdown, Tampa Bay, victory over Oakland, 29-9, last Saturday in Tampa. Then, of course, the Chicago Blitz and the New Jersey Generals last Sunday afternoon at Giant Stadium. We'll pick it up first quarter, fourth and goal, New Jersey. Herschel Walker, touchdown, New Jersey. The Generals lead it 7-0. The Blitz come back in the second quarter. Greg Landry drops back, dumps it over the middle to little Lenny Willis, who makes a big play, goes all the way for the touchdown. We're tied at halftime at seven apiece. Early fourth quarter, big loss for the Blitz. Landry completes the pass to Wayman Bugs, yes, but Landry goes down with a fractured ankle, and Greg Landry is out for the season. Ten to seven, Blitz, and the Generals come right back. They run the reverse. Walter Tullis, big play here. He has some daylight and runs down to the 40-yard line of the Chicago Blitz. From there, you give it to your big play man, Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker finds a gap, runs in from 25 yards out, runs over the defensive back here. The PAT no good. The Generals had a three-point lead, 13 to 10. Costly play for New Jersey, though. Herschel, well, he turns the ball over. Trying for that extra yard, he fumbles. Lance Shields recovers on the New Jersey eight-yard line. From there, the Chicago Blitz were stalled, so they had to settle for a field goal from Frank Corral. It's good from 35 yards out. We're tied at 13. We go to overtime. In the overtime, quarterback Tim Cagle replacing Greg Landry. Throws a bomb here to Trumaine Johnson down the right side. Watch how Johnson pushes out the defender, gets open, no flag. George Allen decides to go for the field goal to win the game in OT. We got the field position, go for it. Corral lines up, Cagle, the holder. Cagle takes off for the football. He runs into the end zone, touchdown. Chicago Blitz, win it in overtime against New Jersey, the final, 19-13. Have you driven a Ford lately? Ford and your local Ford dealer who invite you to see the 1983 Ford Cars and Trucks have presented the USFL, the big play.